Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We'll be starting today's webcast in just a couple minutes. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for the Transportation and Logistics Pricing Management for Dynamics 365 webinar. We're so glad you could make it. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar today, please feel free to type them into the chat box and we'll get those answered for you at the end. And right now I'd like to introduce our first presenter today, James Bowen. Thank you, Brianna. So I want to thank everyone this afternoon for, for joining our webinar uh, around transportation and logistics pricing management for Dynamics 365. Um, we have a lot of great information in, in store um, around uh, transportation and logistics pricing and hope we can uh, give back some, uh, some key information here today. Um, I want to first introduce myself. My name's James Bowen. I'm a uh, Dynamics 365 senior architect and product manager uh, for transportation and logistics solutions here at Itachi. Um, my main role is uh, I work with clients to help maximize uh, customer relationships using solutions based uh, exclusively on uh, the Microsoft technology that's specific to uh, the transportation and logistic industry. Um, I've been here at Itachi for about five years and uh, my, my main roles are, are sales and, and technical 
um, you know, expertise and implementations and integrations with Dynamics 365. Um, I also work with, um, you know, our ISV applications and, and relationships, uh, such as pros to, uh, you know, how it pertains to our products. Um, Andy, you wanted to give a quick introduction? Great. Thanks, James. And hello, everyone. My name is Andy Lasoka, and I am a strategic consultant at Pros in the global transportation and logistics space. So Pros and uh, our TNL focus, uh, where what we do is we, we focus on anything that has an O&D network and O&D pricing and revenue management. And we help companies price uh, or quote these O and D assets quicker, faster, and more at ease. Uh, so I'm happy, James, for uh, thanks for letting me join today, and I'm happy to discuss uh, how Pros integrates uh, in this quoting process as itself. Perfect. Thanks, Andy. Um, so on the agenda today, uh, we want to start with uh, just some, you know, quick introductions to the, uh, you know, transportation and logistics expertise around Hitachi, uh, you know, as well as pros, what we do in practice and, and um, you know, our, our, our ex expertise in, in the, uh, the industry here. Um, then we'll move into, uh, you know, Hitachi and pros, uh, you know, how we work together, um, how we're integrated. Uh, and then we'll move into um, the Hitachi and Pro solution demonstration um, and actually show how our two products are integrated um, in, in a seamless, um, you know, opportunity flow, integrating lane activities, forecasts, um, ultimately quoting, um, and then uh, out into analytics. So um, we'll end on question and answers. And if there's any, any questions throughout the, um, you know, the webinar itself, um, you know, you can throw them into chat. And we'll be happy to, uh, to circle back uh, and get those answered for you. Um, so I want to start with just, uh, you know, the Hitachi overview, um, you know, how we, um, you know, live in uh, the TNL um, space and what, what our, our overview looks like. So um, we have, you know, Hitachi solutions, we have specific uh, transportation and logistic intellectual property. Um, and that, you know, that product helps us uh, speed up project deployments and, and we address you know, uh, unique needs in the industry. Um, so what that means is, you know, clients that want to integrate their TMS or transportation management systems, um, you know, we've done that before. We know how to work, um, you know, within the project of that and pull that information in. Um, you know, call center integrations, being able to surface, um, you know, lane activity information to get to a quick call resolution, um, you know, serve serve up that shipping information. Uh, we understand all that um, and, and how, to, how, to, how to get that done faster in project deployments. Um, you know, within our practice, we have uh, transportation and logistics, uh, you know, subject matter experts and experience. Um, you'll see a few of our clients, uh, you know, down at the bottom of the slide there. Um, so we've done this, you know, numerous times over and know, uh, you know, a lot of the gotchas within, um, you know, specific projects and, and how to get there faster. Um, we do have, um, you know, dedicated transportation and logistics product development team uh, members. Uh, you know, myself, I'm a, I'm a product manager in our TNL product, um, and, and we bring industry industry specific uh, functionality and support, um, you know, to that product. So, you know, as we see, um, you know, changes in the market, we want to pull that back in, um, you know, into the product and, and enhancements. So, you know, we often make enhancements to to the to the product itself. Um, that takes us to, um, you know market development and, and, you know, our sales efforts to the product itself. So again, um, as we see changes in the market, as we need to make enhancements to, to the product, we have a dedicated, uh, you know, team um, and, and product managers that, that put back into the product. Um, I did want to point out that, you know, we have customer roundtables uh, specific to, um, you know, our industry. Um, so we have our customer conference coming up in April um, and we have specific roundtables. Our clients come to the customer conference and share those ideas, um, you know, share those, um, you know, those projects that we're doing and iterations on those projects with other clients um, so they can be vocalized and, um, you know, understanding what uh, your peers are doing, um, you know, in the market. And then, um, you know, as we're doing now, we do run ongoing educational series such as this webinar. Um, you know, within uh, the TNL industry here, um, and, and present on those uh, those common use cases, such as the uh, you know the pricing management today. Um, so, real quick, just wanted to hit on one of our you know client success. So, Sai has been a very long time client, uh, multiple iterations of um, you know their their Dynamics 365 um, you know system, uh, multiple projects we've done. I wanted to just do a couple quick hits on um, you know our understanding of the market and, and what we've done you know for them. So it was the you know integration uh, for call center. Um, you know pulling in that um, you know track trace information. You know pro numbers, the the historical shipment information um, to be able to get to quick resolution for um, you know their their uh, their call center. 
Um, the same would go for the sales side. So being able to give that, you know, account 360 view. So whether that's historical, um, you know, lane information, sales historical data, uh, making all that information available, um, you know, via mobile, um, you know, helped uh, their sales reps be more efficient um, to get to the information faster, um, ultimately closing more deals here. Um, so again, multiple iterations with, um, you know, this client, um, mobile, um, you know, multiple integrations that we've done with various, uh, you know, outside systems, um, but a very good, uh, you know, use case for us in the, in the transportation and, um, you know, logistics space here. And so quickly, I wanted to touch on just our, our product um, that we've created on uh, Dynamics 365 for, for transportation. Um, we'll key in on some of the modules that are there here at the top, um, you know, of the of the slide here. Um, we're going to spend most of our time in the transportation for sales. Um, and when we go through our demonstration, we'll be able to see some of the processes that we've, uh, you know, built and, and how we're integrating exactly with, uh, you know, with pros and making that seamless in the sales process. Um, as I mentioned, we do have, um, you know, a service module where, um, you know, we do call center, we integrate with, uh, you know, shipping and logistics information for that quick call, track trace, you know, um, the case management, if need be, based on damaged shipments, that sort of thing. So that's all managed inside of Dynamics 365 as well. Um, also extending into uh, account planning and forecasting, um, you know, around your various accounts. Um, and then we'll look at it briefly today on how we extend that into contract management and renewal process, um, you know, within the product itself. Um, but again, spending most of our time, um, you know, around the, the sales process and product and, and that integration to, you know, pricing management with pros here. Um, so with that, I'm going to kick it over to, uh, to Andy to take us through, um, you know, the pros overview here. Great. Thanks, James. I'll, I'll be very quick on this overview. Um, so next slide. Sounds good. So pros, we have been around for uh, 30 plus years uh, in the, and we started in the uh, transportation uh, in the revenue management space for airlines. So revenue management, what does that mean? Well, basically that means that for every seat on that plane that's in flight, uh, we determine what price we should be charging for each and every seat on that flight. Uh, Southwest Airlines was our first customer 30 years ago, and there are currently still our customer today. So pros, we believe in long-term partnerships, and we believe in uh, innovations with our partners throughout these 30 years itself. Uh, let's see. James, I don't know if you're, I lost the deck. I don't know if you have the deck presenting. Uh, yes, still should be up there. No worries, I'll continue talking. So 30 years at the middle portion of the um, of the slide. On the left-hand slide, I want to focus on the types of solutions pros offers. So throughout these 30 years of, of experience, um, we have long-term partnerships and our solutions focus on the, the revenue space of contract management. So actually redlining the contract itself Pricing, uh, price management, and price guidance, which utilizes uh, AI and machine learning in determining what price I should be charging in my B2B interactions. Uh, quoting and RM, which is what I touched upon itself. So 30 years ago, we started in the revenue management space. I'm gonna move on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, these are just some of the logos that we have represented in our transportation and logistics focus. Uh, IG Cargo and Mass Cargo uh, are two of our customers today. So we have customers in the revenue management on the cargo side. So think about if for on the passenger side, how pros is determining uh, when to open and close fare classes for all of our passengers buying those tickets. Well, it gets even more complicated when you're talking about cargo revenue management. So we're trying to figure out, you know, with the available capacity that's left after all of our passengers have boarded and all their luggage, luggage has been uh, boarded on the plane itself, what's that remaining capacity? How do we forecast that remaining capacity? And how do we determine what capacity we should be offering at what given price uh, to the marketplace itself? So we, we, we utilize, we have revenue management solutions in the cargo industry. Um, and more recently, we, I talked about Southwest Airlines being our first uh, first customer in the passenger revenue management space uh, about 15 years ago, or let's see, uh, about three years ago, um, Southwest Cargo 
uh, is a customer on pros on the pricing, quoting, and price management uh, piece of the house. Uh, so as we're going through our demo today, um, this is the, a new technology in the B2B space of, you know, what should we be pricing cargo on the OND network itself? So we believe in this continued uh, partnership with Southwest. And finally, YRC Freight. Uh, YRC Freight is an, the largest LTL trucking company in the world. And they're also a pros customer. If you want to move to the next slide, James, uh, we have a, a, a case study for YRC. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to Pro's website to get more information on this case study itself. But we, I just wanted to quickly show the results that customers have received uh, utilizing our, the Pro's scientific guidance in the quoting process. So there's a 9.5% increase in revenue the past few years because, well, with the help of Pro's pricing discipline. Uh, just real quick, what problems do we solve and what problems will we go into in the demo going forward is, you know, just this understanding that in TNL space, we have a network, and over this entire network, there is a general belief that we could be pricing our business better, and we are leaking revenue across this business. But where are we leaking this revenue? Where can we look? So Pros offers that scientific analytic to determine where are those revenue leakages across that network and allows sales leaders to really focus on closing those revenue gaps. What's also really important is that we're able to provide that price guidance at time of quote and serve it up in tools uh, like uh, Microsoft 365 so salespeople could quickly and easily understand what prices they should be offering that's in line with the market that will allow them to win their business but will allow them to win that business at a better revenue or a better margin itself. Um, so YRC Freight, I don't know if we have any LTL carriers, but uh, you know. In, in the LTL world, we provide a discount percent based upon a tariff price, SMC3 or another uh, tariff price. Uh, so pros, and is it, we're capable of delivering that price guidance and then translating it to any discount uh, percent off tariff that, that needs to be. Uh, just so real quick, uh, after the analytics, we're providing YRC the analytics to determine where that revenue leakage is. We're providing them to determine what guidance we should be giving their customers at time of quoting. And doing that, what we're doing is we're improving their profitability across their network, and we're ensuring the sales performance increases over time. All right, thanks James, next slide. All right, so besides that, real quick, the, some of the tools that pros uh, offers, we discussed the non-optimized pricing execution. So we're, what we're doing is we're providing through data science, what is the correct price we should be offering to our customers at that time of quote? Uh, we're utilizing this dynamic pricing model to determine what those prices should be. So based upon the current capacity of the routes, based upon the current O and D lane that I'm trying to, to price, perhaps it's based upon a particular you know, route or a truck or a flight that I'm pricing we're able to determine what that, what that price could be. We want to integrate that into a process so it becomes less manually intensive, and we, we allow salespeople to spend the time uh, doing tasks that are more, more uh, high value. Uh, we talk about how there's, currently there's poor visibility into underperformers, so understanding where I'm leaking my revenue. And I think with, our, with the integration with uh, Dynamics 365, which we'll be going over, we'll show how we integrate into that, this quoting process. So we take advantage of uh, Hitachi 365's quoting platform, their, uh, their direct capabilities in the TNL space. We offer our data science to fit into that process itself, but it's one seamless integrated quoting process that uh, our customers can present out to their field. So we're really excited about what we have uh, to share with you guys. Next slide, James. All right, so what we want to do without further ado um, is to get into what a, just a um, illustrative workflow and illustrative demo of what we see work in the, uh, the quoting space. So at the top, we have color coded, we have red and blue color code. The red will be the Dynamics 365, the blue will be uh, the pros piece, 
it'll look very similar in both of this, and that's the point. We want to show a, a seamless integrated process, uh, but really we, we wanted to show how um, this, this illustrative process we'll be demonstrating goes from a lead from the, from the top in the CRM down to the opportunity in the CRM. In that opportunity, we'll be creating a quote, and this could be, we use the term quote loosely. It could be a spot quote, or a RFP bid response, a tender response. And the example today we'll be showing is a, a RFP response. Uh, from that quote and that RFP response, we'll, we'll perform the win-loss reporting. And then we'll, we'll be utilizing that win-loss reporting to do remarketing, which will lead us back to the lead itself. So it's one closed loop process that's, um, that's enabled by technology and by data science to make it quicker, faster, and smarter. So next slide, James. Let's lead us through this demo. So in this demo, what we're going to show is that we're going to show an integrated quoting and pricing on an, an RFP or just a bid, right? So I'm an RFP manager on the left-hand side, and my problem is today is I can't analyze and price as strategic, strategically as I'd like. And why is that? Well, we all know that the RFPs are very time-consuming. Uh, it takes a lot of work just on the data front to determine uh, to translate the data that we receive from the customer into the data that we have to uh, put in on our source systems for the pricing itself. Uh, we don't have any tools that have this price guidance to determine what prices I should be offering. I may be utilizing sale rate sheets that rates are old and don't reflect current market needs. And in general, the overall process and handles is inefficient and is time consuming. So what James and I are going to show today is how do we make this process more seamless and, and smarter utilizing data science? So we're gonna map elements that's from our, CR, from our CRM to our quote, to what we, we receive from the customer, say through Excel. We're able to upload that information. We're able to translate that information to uh, data that makes sense for us, for me to do my pricing. And then we create this kind of centralized and strategic cockpit to help with data science to determine what is the prices I should be offering, what else should I be considering, and what is the approval process that's appropriate for this given workflow. Doing that, what we'll receive is we'll, we'll be gaining more benefits and increased lane volumes. We'll be understanding what lanes are we winning, what lanes are we losing, and we're able to bubble up these, this information up to uh, analytics and reports that can be digested at a management level make me make better informed decisions as this loop continues on. So with that, I'm gonna kick off this uh, RFP process, uh, kick it over to James and show how we start this process in Dynamics 365. Perfect, thanks Andy. And um, you know, great, uh, great lead in and uh, the process that we're gonna, where we're gonna go through here. So um, yeah, but kick it off and, and um, you know, I'm gonna start inside of Dynamics, uh, you know, 365, we'll see a seamless process of the, the quoting and pricing in an opportunity, um, you know, kind of facet, but wanted to start with just the account 360 and, you know, serving up some of that important information that'll get me into, um, you know, the opportunity process. And so we, if we think about a lead, it could come in in, in various ways, um, you know, through marketing automation, through the website, um, maybe I, I meet somebody at a trade show, but I'm going to upload it in the system and start working that process. Um, here we're looking at an account 360, more of a mature account that we'll move through and do an additional, um, you know, RFP, the lane bidding here. But things I can see, you know, I obviously track my activities. I can see various contacts. Um, you'll notice I can do some account planning and contracts, uh, you know, down here at the bottom. Um, but really, you know, serving up that important information, whether that's on the service side or whether that's on um, the sales side of the house, on, on annual summary information, you know, key metrics around, Archer Daniels Midland, the, uh, you know, the company, um, lane activities, you know, are we tracking correctly uh, based on our contracts on those lanes um, that we might have sold? Um, so being able to quick hit and see that information around the, uh, the account here, very important. Um, as we move on, you know, some additional related records, um, you know, being able to see those contracts, being able to see those service requests, um, you know, down here, was there damaged shipments? Did a shipment not arrive? Again, call reports, but having that 360 degree view, um, you know, around my client uh, at any given time, mobility in the web, um, you know, what have you. So we're going to spend our time here on this new opportunity. It's a, you know, an ADM shipment, um, new, new shipment opportunity. So once we click on that, it's going to take us into the, you know, the opportunity form where we're going to start working down 
our, uh, you know, our guided process here. So, um, you know, two forms of, of the process that we have here, as, as Andy mentioned, you know, it could be a spot quote that we want to, you know, go forth and, and get, you know, shipping information, um, you know, what's the load and get it out the door, get that, get that going. We're going to work on the, you know, the pricing proposal piece here. Um, and again, you'll notice there's a, a business process flows is in some of our um, transportation product um, that we've dedicated to the product. So we're going to go through and, and actually engage in a pricing proposal here. So once we stage through, um, you'll notice we can start to associate, um, you know, our, uh, uh, our, uh, our, our contract forecast there. That does a couple things. Um, you know, that gives us um, a spot to where we can, you know, start to quote those lanes. Um, you know, this is just three, an example, you might have 50, you might have, um, you know, 100, um, but you have, you know, the Atlanta to LA, uh, New York to San Francisco, but we can start to look at, you know, what we're planning, what we're forecasting, and then ultimately go get that pricing. Um, so you'll notice in process here, this is where um, I'll, I'll kick it over to Andy, but he'll start to show, you know, we're in the opportunity process. We're going to go ahead and start to get the optimum pricing and start to use some of that analytics and, and, and um, you know, predict what pricing we should do on each one of these lanes here. Um, so, Andy, you want to go ahead and take it through the, uh, the quoting and pricing process here? Yep. Sounds good. So I'm in the opportunity. I'm in the uh, Dynamics 365 opportunity. And what I want to do is I'm going to create a new pricing quote for this opportunity uh, from this pricing proposal. So in this example, uh, we received a proposal from uh, ADM. So we want to uh, upload their proposal of what lanes they want to give us into this uh, quote to help me do my analysis. So now I'm moving from the Dynamics 365 into the pros quote. It looks very seamless, and I'm going to name this quote, uh, this uh, private quote response in this example, and I'm going to hit OK. So now I created a new quote object uh, within Dynamics 365. What this quote object will do, it allows me to actually do my pricing itself. So here I am. I'm in my quote object. And in my quote object, I'm pulling in all the relevant information from uh, Dynamics 365. So in this example, I'm pulling in the account name, pulling in the account opportunity, pulling in the quote name, and I could change this. And all of this is configurable. Um, again, so this could meet your business process. But in this example, I'm also pulling in the due date of when I need this uh, quote response, this you know bid or tender response back to uh, the customer. When did the, the rates go live? When do the rates end? And now I see a, a pricing tier. So in this example, a pricing tier, it could be based upon, say, how much consumption I'm getting from this customer, how much revenue I'm getting from this customer itself. It could be gold, silver, bronze pricing in this example. It could also be based upon if I know the criteria that the customer is utilizing to, uh, to score my RFP, I can provide that template, that scoring template into my program and into my pricing tier, and I could price accordingly to that, to that, uh, to that score output. So in this example, uh, I have defaulted to the pricing tier of gold. So I'm going to give this customer some gold uh, status pricing. And now I see an input file. So I'm going to import the file that's been sent to my customer. In this example, it's an Excel file. So I'm going to import the Excel file. Uh, the Excel file, what it has, it has zip3, zip3 quantity information uh, from the customer itself. And then I want to do the mapping. I want I, I do the mapping of what the customer has sent me versus the information that I have for in my in my system, in my quote system to do my uh, pricing. Then I do this zip3 to zip3 mapping to lane to lane interaction. So on the left hand side, you see or on the input values, you see the left hand, you see the zip3, origin, zip3, destination values. On the right hand side, you see these lanes into a quote. And I'm going to add this information to the quote for me to do my pricing. All right, so we have received the quote from the customer. We have uploaded it into the tool. And now I'm in my quote object and I am in my little cockpit to have me do quick and fast and smart analysis on this quote itself. So on the left-hand side, I see all my lanes. I see the volumes that the customer has uh, discussed they want me to price on. I see a price in the third column. This price would be a tariff price. Then I see a net price, and that net price is based upon a discount. 
I see a total net price, and then I also see a score. So the score column is a very colorful column currently. And in this example, what that score column is giving me is it's showing me a score of the current discount I am giving for that customer lane combination versus all of the peers of that customer and lane and that current price that those peers are receiving. So I'm doing this comparison of the this current customer lane versus all the scientifically derived peers of this customer, and we're showing how competitive is this price itself. So take, for example, Chicago to New Orleans, the, the first lane. I see that the score is a 45, which shows that I am that it is at a lower price than the peers of his peer group. So what I can do is I could click on that net price for that Chicago, Chicago to New Orleans lane, and I see that that price is currently at 172, and then I see a very clear floor target and expert price guidance that helps me determine what is the current, what is the, op, what is the discount, or what is that price that I should be offering this customer for that given lane combination. So I see that they're getting a 172, but I see that that's actually near the floor. And for all the segmented uh, derived customers, I should be going to a price that's more about 183. So when I select 183, what I'll see my score column on the right, which is currently a 45, uh, that will be increased to 55. So I now have a better price. I have a better score. And you see on the right hand side, I actually have a, a lower win rate because I have a higher, higher price. But the win rate helps me another piece of information that helps me understand how much, what's the probability of me winning this business at that current price. So I have all these levers at my fingertips to help me go through my bid or my tender and help determine what is the optimal prices I should be paying, I should be offering for each of my lanes. Doing another lane, you see I have, and I'm from my Philly to New York City lane. This has been a price at 10. I could pull up the same window and determine for Philly to New York City, you know, I'm really underpriced the market and I could, I could offer a price of expert and still uh, win that business. So that was a, the, a response to a bid. What I really want to show is a lot of times we're, we, we showed origin, destination, and we showed volume. Uh, we, we have capabilities to determine routes itself as well. So in this example, it's a different example, uh, but I have some routes. In this example, there's several flights going through several different cities, and I want to help determine which, of the, which are the best routes that I want to help, uh, that I want to bid with with the customer. So I'll, with pros, I could also I could also optimize what routes I should be offering. So in this example, I'm optimizing for a lowest price. I'm optimizing for say a passenger uh, flight. I'm optimizing for the shortest duration. I am optimizing for the least constrained route. And it's additional information, uh, additional uh, price science that I can help you make my decisions. So with pros, we're helping understand what is the right price, what is the correct routing, giving the customer options in our response to how we could best fulfill their business. Once I do that, I can select my, I can move my quote through the approval process. In this example, I need to review, so it can be sent up to my, uh, my manager for my review of this business process. I could create the actual proposal document. So this proposal document, it'll in include some title page, cover letter, T's and C's. I could update any of the text that I need for my letter itself. And I'll also include all the lanes that I, or the price proposals that I could send back to the customer itself. And I could save and close this inside the quote object. And that quote object and the lanes that I have bid upon will now be seamlessly integrated back into the opportunity where uh, Dynamics 365 can take over and uh, determine how best to uh, manage those lanes that I bid on. 
So, James? Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Andy. <clears throat> so, what we want to show here is it, 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 that was great. That showed us the uh, you know exact uh, seamless you know business process there. Um, you know opportunity. Um, you know going through the the lane bidding process, uh, winning the business, um, and then what we want to show here is seamlessly. Still, we're taking it into the the contractual phase. Um, so we're pulling those lanes um, you know back into Dynamics. All all you know seamless CRM process there. Um, and then ultimately, you know, wanting to go out and, and understand what we're winning and what we're losing. Um, and what this does is through, you know, win loss analysis, this opens up some, uh, you know, reporting to where we, we understand how what we're doing well, what we're not doing so well. We're understanding that revenue leakage. Um, you know, where could we maybe spend some more time, discount less, spend more or, or quote more. Um, on 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 given lanes. So if we you know advance forward, this then opens up um, you know the capabilities to then close win by line item. Um, uh, we often see this in, in uh, TNL on being able to exactly understand that you know your win loss ratio um, on what you're uh, what you're out there bidding um, you know for business. Um, so if we you know next stage forward um, you know into the overall reporting, what does this open up? So um, you know, through through BI and analytics, um, you know, through Power BI, um, we're able to pull in, uh, you know, these data sets uh, and understand, um, you know, your origin code. Um, you know, what are your number of shipments by state, you know, to the destination state, and then really understand, um, you know, your year over year or your quarter, you know, your monthly um, increases and decreases in sales. Um, and, and know where to throttle up, where to throttle down. But again, giving you that that true year over year look um, and your overall um, you know growth trajectory um, of your business, um, you know based on those shipments. Again, just another look into some of the data that can be um, you know brought out of this process is is again the the, the year over year, the numbers, um, your origin codes, uh, being able to blow it up in a um, you know a matte uh, look and feel here. Uh, but again, another way to digest uh, you know these data sets, and then really the. Um, you know, the Holy Grail report is what I like to call it here. Um, truly understanding, you know, what bids you're winning and what bids you're losing and then why. Um, understanding where um, in a particular region um, you might be doing well, you might not be doing well. Um, but again, through that process we just looked at, this is really what it opens up, you know, opens up uh, when, when, you, when you're able to, uh, you know, start to, to do it that way. <clears throat> Lastly, just want to, you know, circle back on and recap, uh, you know, what we covered and, and, and the processes we covered. So, um, you know, we walked through, um, you know, the integrated process with, uh, you know, the Atachi Solutions product and um, the pros, um, you know, quoting and, and, and pricing, um, you know, it directly in the opportunity management. So we took it from, you know, opportunity. Um, we went into the quoting process with pros, um, did some, you know, machine learning and, and optimized pricing um, in that quote in line, you know, then moved it forward, sent the bid out, got approval, um, and then we calculated our win-loss reporting. Um, you know, through that, we were able to spit out some, um, you know, uh, reports on in Power BI. Uh, ultimately, would take us to the remarketing phase to where, um, you know, if we're losing or if we're winning, understanding that and remarketing, um, you know, appropriately here. Um, so with that, um, you know, I'd like to open it up for, uh, you know, any questions um, that you might have. Uh, we can dump them in chat. Happy to, uh, um, happy, happy to do that. Thank you, James. Um, if anyone does have any last minute questions for the chat, please feel free to type them now. And um, we have a couple questions here for you guys. Um, the first question is, how long is a typical implementation? Um, yeah, I could take that. Um, so, you know, they vary uh, based on project, but typically we, you know, you could see anywhere from three to six months um, from a full implementation. Yep. That oh. is in line with pros as well. All right, perfect. And then um, another question is getting salespeople to change can be difficult. How do you ensure sales adoption of these processes? Uh, hey, James, I could take that question. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is a great question. Getting sales adoption is difficult as we're changing, uh, as they're getting, uh, if, as new technology is being brought. Uh, what we like to do is we, what we have seen is um, in kind of celebrating the easy victories, right? So once, once we go live with, uh, our customers, there's there's multiple several different approaches we could take, uh, but what we want to do is we want to show how you know 
the sales people that are adopting the tools, how they're actually, you know, increasing revenue and how, you know, the process does become easier and you're able to get more quotes out the door. So measuring these types of KPIs and presenting them to, uh, you know, people utilizing the system and the output of those KPIs is one way to uh, increase sales adoption. Uh, just real quickly, another way to um, to increase sales adoption is actually align, um, you know, salespeople's compensations and salespeople's goals uh, with actual revenue of, you know, revenue targets, and ensuring that you know if if, if instead of going for that floor price guidance, if we're going for that target price guidance. What does that mean in terms of your quota attainment and really tying that back into actual, you know, compensation numbers. Um, so we've done that in the past of actually uh, showing, you know, what is that difference between floor target and expert? What does that mean in terms of compensation and showing those directly on the screen uh, really helps increase that sales adoptions where they could, where, you know, like everyone where you could see the, the uh, financial impacts of your decisions. All right, thanks, Andy. And then we have another question um, on what are the price scores based on? Yep, uh, I think that's for me, James. So the price sure. scores, so they are configurable uh, and they could be based on several, you know, several aspects. And the example that we walk through, those price scores, they're based directly on the floor, target, and expert price. And each of those prices align to a score itself. So when you think about a real quick, how we do segmentation and pricing guidance is we take that for that given customer, for that given lane, for that given transaction, and all those attributes of the transaction, and that could be, you know, what am I shipping, the density of that shipping, the time of day, the day of week. We're comparing all those attributes against the peers, uh, scientifically, scientifically derived peers of that product customer transaction attributes. And then we're determining how well is that, is that current transaction priced against all of its peers. And then we're offering recommendations of what it should be priced, and we're offering a score for that given uh, transaction. So that score is aligned to how well is that given customer uh, price compared to its peers. And then it's a quick and easy way for me to determine, you know, what type of approval process do I need to go through based upon that, that, that score itself. So to answer the question, how are scores derived? Well, it's configurable by the business. Uh, we bring in kind of best practices of what we've seen work in terms of how uh, those scores could be configured. It typically could be based on pricing science and how the score is utilized. Well, the scores are utilized to help direct uh, the types of approvals that are needed in my workflows. Thanks. And then I think we have a follow-up question on that. Um, how do you determine exact prices for expert level scores? Do you check market prices or just prices agreed with that concrete customer? Yep, we could do both. Uh, in, in our segmentation pricing guidance process, uh, we need two pieces of information. The one piece of information that is a must have is transactional information. So we check all the past transaction of that customer, but more importantly, all of the peers of that customer. So we're, we're broadening it up and understanding what attributes are utilized in the pricing and determining what is the, what is the peer pricing of that transaction. So that's, that's one way we're doing just, we're doing a uh, peer to peer comparison. The second uh, additional piece of information is market information. So if there's that trans core information, uh, in the air cargo world, there's uh, World ACD or Seabury information. We could peg our pricing guidance on market data to determine, you know, how well is this customer being priced versus this market indicator? And are they being priced above the market? Or are they being priced at the market and below the market? And when the market price moves, we could understand where that peg customer should also move with that customer. So to answer that question, uh, you know, it could be both. Uh, transactional information, it's a must have, and most TNL customers uh, have great, uh, typically, transactional information to close invoices. Any uh, market data that's available, we utilize 
in our segmentation pricing guidance, and we can peg our pricing guidance to that market data. Awesome, thanks. And um, next question is, is there a version for European market? Um, Hitachi yeah, side, go for it, James. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it, it can all be, it's all offered on Dynamics, uh, you know, 365, both um, the transportation solution and pros. Um, so yes, in short. Okay. Yep. We have global customers. Yep. Perfect. And do you have full truckload customers? Yes, on the pro side, we have full truckload customers. So we do FTL and LTL customers uh, in quoting and in um, bid response. Yep, and same for, for Itachi, both um, FTL and LTL customers. Okay, and next question is, in pros, how is cost considered in the context of price? Does it determine the floor? Yes, so when we go through a project, we, we help determine how we best want to map costs into our recommendations. So for example, we don't know cost, we don't know actual cost at time of quoting or at time of shipment. So there's several different avenues we could take and help determining what that cost could be. Um, so just to give one example, uh, instead of, in my example, I showed price guidance based upon actual price. Well, I could actually do price guidance in terms of margin itself, and that margin would consider um, cost. And for that cost, I could use a planned or, uh, you know, a, a planned cost or what we believe that cost to be at time of quoting. So I could utilize that planned cost into my margin calculation, determine what that floor, target, and expert margin is going to be, then translate that margin to, say, price and actually quote that price itself. So cost is taken into a, to, in, to effect in multiple different ways. One of the ways is through, uh, through the optimization of margin, and that margin could uh, be utilized in that floor, target, and expert calculation. Okay, thank you. And I think this is a follow-up question on the European market. Um, do you have such price scores and price guidance for Europe? So in terms of market data, PROS does not sell market information. Uh, any market information that our customers subscribe to, uh, we can they, the customers can send two pros into our price guidance tools, and then we can do that pegging of market information to our price guidance itself. Okay, and how do you do peer-to-peer -peer checking? Uh, yep, so I think that's for pros. So our peer-to-peer, -peer, we go through a, we have a scientific process. So pros, we have customers in the transportation and logistics space. We also have customers in 30 different industries, and we have a segmentation and pricing guidance process that we utilize across all of our industries, and which is great because we get the best practices of all these industries, and we util we get, we're able to utilize that in our solutions. So currently what we do is we go through a process. We pull in as many attributes that our customers have available uh, on their way bills or airway bills, and their customer masters, and then we just determine, we do a test of understanding which attributes help determine the price. And with those attributes that help determine price, we're able to segment that data into peer, to like peer-to-peer -peer comparisons. So we agree with our customers about what, uh, what attributes have been found significant. Uh, we're able to determine what customers make, what customers make up these transactions and these uh, segmentations. And then that defines what a peer is. So what's interesting is, you know, think about a customer. A customer may be a high performer on certain transactions on certain lanes. And when I mean high performer, say they're paying a premium. That customer on other lanes may be paying a low performer because for some reason they have a, you know, 
they have there's a glitch in the system. They're being offered an incorrect price, but they're a low performer in some areas of the network, high performers in the other. What pros could see is on, what pros price science helps determine or helps shed lights on are, the, are those discrepancies of where customers are, say, high performers at some places and low performers other places. Great. Well, those are all the questions that we have in the chat box today. If anyone does have any questions later, please feel free to email us at na.marketing at hitachisolutions.com, the email right there on the screen. I'd like to thank James and Andy again for all the great information on today's webinar. And thank you everyone who attended. We hope you all have a great day.